and welcome to another video by BioTeach. This time I'm focusing on required practical seven for A-level biology students. I have made other practical videos which are linked in the description of this video, so please make sure you scroll down and have a look at those as well and hit the subscribe button on the bottom right corner of your screen now to support my channel and also to share this video with anyone who you might think might find it useful. So Required Practical 7 is all about using chromatographic techniques to investigate pigments in leaves. We usually use spinach leaves for this. You may be asked to choose to look at red leaves, say from salad bags, green leaves like spinach leaves, leaves from plants that are tolerant to the shade and leaves from plants that are shade intolerant. The reason we use chromatography is because plants contain a pigment called chlorophyll, which is responsible for absorbing photons of light to allow photosynthesis to take place. Most plants have other photosynthetic pigments that might not be green in colour. This is an advantage as these different sorts of pigments will absorb different wavelengths of light and still be able to photosynthesise. Chromatography is a technique that allows us to separate the chlorophyll and other pigments from the leaves and we can use that data to compare different sets of leaves. In order to extract the pigments we need to select leaves from plants. We usually use spinach in the lab but there are other coloured leaves from salad bags that work well also so kind of like your red leaves that you would see. You would get a pestle and mortar and mush up the leaf with a bit of solvent and when you have a coloured liquid you can spot a few drops of that on the TLC plate. The idea is is to leave them upright in the solvent to allow separation a bit like that's shown in the diagram there. And the end results that are shown in that image are where you can almost see this sort of drag mark of colour going upwards, showing the separate pigments that make up the whole pigment in that leaf. In all chromatography, there is a mobile phase and there is a stationary phase. The stationary phase is the phase that doesn't move, and in this case it will be the paper on which you spotted the pigment from the mushed up leaf. And the mobile phase is the phase that does move, and in this case it will be the solvent that you're using. The mobile phase moves through the stationary phase, and in doing so, picking up the compounds that are to be tested, and usually you place your compounds on the bottom line where you've spotted them, as you can see on this diagram here. As the mobile phase continues to travel through the stationary phase, it takes the compounds with it and it creates that drag effect you saw in the previous image. At different points in the stationary phase, the different components of the compound are going to be absorbed and are going to stop moving with the mobile phase. And this is how the results of any chromatography test are obtained from the point at which the different components of the compound stop moving and separate from other components. This is what the end result would roughly look like. You can see there from that image, each pigment ends and the next one begins. From this particular chromatography plate, we can calculate something known as an RF value. The RF value is known as the retention factor, and it's basically a quantitative indication of how far a particular compound has traveled in a particular solvent. The RF value is a really good indicator of whether an unknown compound and a known compound are similar, if not identical. And if the RF value of the unknown compound is close to or the same as the RF value of the known compound, then we can say that the two compounds are most likely to be similar or identical. More on how to calculate the RF value a little bit later. Let's first talk about the exact method you're going to use to carry out this practical. So these instructions are taken directly from the AQA practical handbooks and these are the sheets that are normally given to you in the beginning of your practical lesson for you guys to read through. So you'll be given a set of boiling tubes and at the beginning you need to set up those two boiling tubes and add about three centimetres cubed of solvent to each of the two boiling tubes and you have to put a bung in the top of each tube and stand them upright in the rack. These solvents are going to evaporate off if you don't put the bung in so it's really important to measure it and pop the bung in as soon as you have put the solvent in and make sure that the tubes are labeled A and B because they're going to be for your two different leaves. You will take a piece of chromatography paper that fits into the boiling tube, usually this will be cut for you by the teachers or the technicians but you may need to cut it yourself and you will basically rule a pencil line about two centimeters from the bottom of the filter paper. This line is called the origin line. 
At the top of the chromatography paper in pencil, you will write leaf A. You will do the same for the second leaf as well. You will cut a disc from whichever your leaf A is with a cork borer. You need to avoid the veins and the midrib of the leaf when you do this because there's very little chlorophyll in those areas. So try and do the actual leafy part of the leaf. If you place the leaf disc on the chromatography paper at the centre of the line marking the origin, you can crush the disc onto the paper with the end of a glass rod. The crushed leaf should leave a stain on the chromatography paper. Alternatively, you may want to crush the leaf itself and in a pestle and mortar with some solvent and then spot the pigment onto the origin line. Once the stain is present on the line of origin, you can pin the chromatography paper to the bung with a drawing pin and then pop the chromatography paper into the tube labelled A, as shown in the diagram. You have to make sure the end of the chromatography paper is in the solvent and the solvent does not come above the origin line, as shown by that diagram as well. And then just pop the tube carefully back onto the rack and don't move it again. The idea is to basically let the solvent run up the chromatography paper until it almost reaches the top of the paper. When it's almost there, maybe around a centimetre from the top, remove the chromatography paper from the tube and immediately draw a pencil line to show how far the solvent has moved up the paper. This marks what we call the solvent front and it's a really important line to mark up, otherwise you won't be able to do your RF calculations. The chromatography paper with its coloured spots is now called a chromatogram. Let this chromatogram dry and use a pencil to draw around each of the coloured spots that you see on the chromatogram. Repeat all of the steps that we've talked about with the second leaf creating another chromatogram with leaf B. And by the end of it, you should have two chromatograms that you can compare to each other. Now once you've done that, you can calculate the RF value. The RF value is calculated by looking at the distance that's moved by the pigment from the origin to the centre of the pigment spot and measuring the distance from the origin to the solvent front. By using those two numbers dividing the top by the bottom, you can calculate a numerical value which is known as the retention factor or the RF value. So the easiest way to kind of explain how to do this is really just to look at some past exam questions. It says there, the student obtained a solution of pigments from the leaves of the plant and the student used paper chromatography to separate the pigments. The diagram shows the chromatogram produced and you can see there you've got the line of origin and you've got spots A to E that have been identified on this chromatogram. So the first question is asking, explain why the student marked the origin using a pencil rather than using ink. So if you'd pause the video now to have a think about why they use pencil and then we'll go through the answer. So if you remember from doing the chromatogram, the solvent will pass through the line of origin. If you drew the line of origin in pen, then the solvent would basically carry the ink all the way through the chromatogram and it would basically mix with the leaf pigments. So we don't want that to happen. So the answer as to why the student marked the origin using pencil rather than using ink is to say that we are preventing the mixing of the ink and the leaf pigments. We are ensuring that the pencil line is also still visible. If you used an ink pen to draw the line of origin, then the solvent would carry the ink away and you would not be able to see the line of origin. Whereas with a pencil, there's no pigments in there. So that pencil line stays visible to us during the course of the experiment. Another question that's asked is to describe the method the student used to separate the pigments after the solution of pigments had been applied to the origin. So if you want to pause the video now and have a go at answering this question, we'll go through the answer in a second. So for this, you want to talk about how you um, left the solvent line that was below the line of origin. Remember, that's one of the things that we just talked about in the methods, that the solvent line should always be below the origin so the solvent can pass through the origin. And basically, you would stop the test when the solvent almost reached the top. So about a centimetre from the top, then you would remove the chromatogram from the solvent and you would draw a line as to where the solvent line ended. This next diagram is showing you about the RF values. So it says calculating the RF values of the pigments can help to identify each pigment. An RF value compares the distance the pigment has moved from the origin with the distance the solvent has moved from the origin. The distance each pigment has moved is measured from the middle of each spot. 
So it gives you the RF calculation at that point. Now, the question for this is to basically say that pigment A, which is the top dot at the, in the chromatogram that you can see there, has an RF value as 0.95. Use the diagram to calculate the RF value of pigment C. Now, as you can see from the formula, you are missing some key pieces of information. I've already got the RF value as 0.95, so all I need to do is measure from the origin, and that will give me the distance pigment has moved, and then what I need to do is rearrange the RF formula to obtain the distance that the solvent has moved. Once I've got the distance that the solvent has moved, if I then measure C from the origin, I can use that measurement to then calculate the RF value for C. I've already worked out the distance the solvent has moved from the origin, so I can basically plug that into the formula and work out what the distance is. Hopefully that's been quite helpful for you to see how you can use the RF formula to calculate the retention factor, but also how you can rearrange this formula to work out any of the other two factors that are involved in that as well. So have a think about how you would answer this question and then we'll go through the answer together. Hope that was really useful for you all. There are some other videos for practicals on my channel, so please feel free to check them out in the description below. Feel free to leave me comments or questions and make sure that you've subscribed to this channel for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.